I'm here to tell you guys about the year 2000 now. I'm not, I don't want to make this boring. I'll just tell you all the good stuff about 2000, at least the things that I think make it the most memorable year in WDF history and the best year in WDF history. All right, let's kick it off from January. January, you got the first Raw of 2000, of the year 2000, the McMahon Helmsley regime is running strong. The McMahon Helmsley regime was pretty much Stephanie after turning on her dad the month before at Armageddon 99, um, teamed up and, be, and became a heel with her husband, Triple H. She wasn't married to him that, at that time, it was just kayfabe, but they were dating. Um, they pretty much ran Raw, they kicked their dad out, like after Triple H beat him at Armageddon 99, they pretty much ran the whole company. Uh, the McMahon-Helmsley regime consisted of Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, uh, X-Pac, uh, Road Dog, and later Tory would, uh, not Tory Wilson, another Tory, uh, would team up with them, I think in, I can't remember, I think after WrestleMania, I can't remember, but anyways, uh, they screwed the big shot of the battle in the first Raw, so Big Show lost the belt, um, Triple H was the champion again. They picked on Mick Foley so many times, they fired him, um, and then The Rock came out the week after they fired Mick Foley. He had all the guys lined up outside the ring, and he said that if you don't reinstate Mick Foley, every single WWF superstar will walk out on your candy asses, and then Triple H and Stephanie were like, all right, he's reinstated, which led to a feud between Mick Foley and Triple H. Uh, Mick Foley uh, realized that he's been pushed around too far. He brought back the Cactus Jack gimmick on an episode of SmackDown. It was so cool because... Um, he was walking down the ramp, cutting a promo, and then he's all like, I think you know the guy, and he takes off his mask, his Mankind mask, and then Triple H is like, uh-oh, and then he rips his uh, white button-up shirt that he always wear, and then boom, it's a Cactus Jack shirt. Yeah, World Series Champions. Um, and Triple H was like, and it's cool because that went back to, I think, 96 when they had a street fight on Raw. So, like, Triple H does know who Cactus Jack is firsthand, not just because, like, oh, you know, I know the business. Like, no, he knows who he is because he's faced the persona of Cactus Jack. He knows what Mick Foley goes. You know, Mick, Mankind's already crazy, but Cactus Jack is beyond crazy. Um, they had a match at the Royal Rumble. The, the Rock won the Royal Rumble that day. Um, that Royal Rumble match in the uh, Royal Rumble 2000 um, led to controversy between him and Big Show because the Rock's feet touched the ground. Big Show and Rock would go on a feud till uh, No Way Out. Kurt Angle, Dave, uh, Kurt Angle made his um, um, per Royal Rumble debut, not in the match, but in the Royal Rumble match. But he opened up the, the card that night against Taz, who made his debut that night. Got a huge pop from the New York crowd. Uh, Taz would win by submission, but that's pretty much as big as Taz would get, sadly, that whole year. Uh, he never really got pushed into WWF. Um, um, Triple H and Cactus Jack had the street fight at Royal Rumble 2000. Triple H won cleanly. Well, you know, within the rules, which there wasn't really any rules. Led to a Hell in a Cell match uh, between them at No Way Out 2000. If Triple H won. Um, um, Triple H, um, obviously, he'd still be the champion. And Mick Foley would be forced to retire. Mick Foley lost. Um, he, he had to retire. Linda McMahon brought him back, put him in the main event at WrestleMania 2000, thought it was the right thing to do because he screwed him out of his career. So I'm, sorry if I'm talking too fast, but I'm trying to make the video short as I can. Um, the main event at WrestleMania was a fatal four between Big Show, Mick Foley, Triple H, and The Rock. Good storytelling, I think. Not great, but good as far as, you know, the animosity these guys had against one another, Triple H. And when I mean that, I mean Triple H and Rock. I mean Triple H and Mankind and uh, Rock and Big Show. All those guys had a nice little program going. Um... The Rock would get screwed at the WrestleMania, no, no wait, yeah, WrestleMania main event. Um, led to a match between uh, The Rock and um, a Triple H at Backlash. Um, oh, by the way, WrestleMania 16 was Mick Foley's last match that year as a full, as a full, you know, um, competitor um, or active competitor. Uh, led to a match between The Rock and Triple H at Backlash. Um, the Rock won. Stone Cold returned that night just to do a run in, which is huge at that time because we hadn't seen Stone Cold. You know, in in the ring, he had some a few promos where he blew up the DX Express bus and stuff like that. But to see him actually walk down the the entrance way, we had not seen that since November of the previous year. So that was like a good six months without Stone Cold, which is you know a big deal at that time because he was like the cornerstone of the Attitude Era. Um, 
uh, Triple, uh, the Rock would win that match. Led to another match between The Rock and Triple H. This is how the, the feud was just really good between these guys. An Iron Man match this time with Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee. There is a conspiracy or um, speculation as to who side uh, Shawn Michaels would be on. If Shawn Michaels would favor Shawn, uh, Triple H. If Shawn Michaels would call it down the middle. No one really thought he was going to favor uh, The Rock. But in the end, he called it down the middle. The Undertaker made his debut at the uh, Judgment Day 2000 as the American Badass. He came back. As, after being gone for like I don't even remember how long he was gone but he's gone for a while uh, months and it was huge at that time as well uh, the match ended in um, uh, what happened Undertaker Undertaker um, gave the two, the tombstone to Triple H which was a, a DQ and even though the clock had already rang uh, Shawn Michaels called it as a DQ, awarded the fall to Triple H, and with time expired, Triple H won by one fall, winning or beating, he didn't really beat The Rock, but he beat The Rock uh, for the WWE Championship, led to a six-man tag at the King of the Ring 2000, King, uh, that's when King Kurt was crowned, he won that year, just kept adding on to his... Uh, to his um, year, this was I would like to call the year of Kurt Angle. To, to be honest, um, I mean I, I'm kind of going out of order here, but just going back a, just for a quick minute uh, to WrestleMania 16. At that, he went, Kurt Angle went to WrestleMania into WrestleMania 16 as the European and the Intercontinental Champion. He defended both belts in a triple threat match that was two falls for each belt. So it was against Benoit and Jericho. He got pinned the first time by I think Benoit. Benoit became the Intercontinental Champion. That was done. And then he got pinned. And then they started the match over. It's like, okay, another triple threat match. And then Jericho pinned them. And Jericho became the European champion. So everyone thought like, oh, man. They're just like letting the air out of his um, his uh, push balloon there. But no. Uh, he would keep going. He, he won the King of the Ring in 2000. The main event at King of the Ring 2000 was um, Kane, Undertaker, and The Rock versus uh, Triple H, Shane, and Vince. And wh whichever guy from, from The Rock's team... Uh, you know, whether it's The Rock, Undertaker, Kane would get the pinfall on any member of the other team. That person would become the WF champion. The Rock ended up pinning, I think he pinned Shane McMahon. I can't remember. I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't pin Triple H. Uh, the Rock became the WF champion. He feuded with Chris Benoit going into um, Fully Loaded 2000, which was billed as the triple main event. And it really was a triple main event. You had The Rock and Chris Benoit in a great feud. The only, pretty much the only relevant feud Benoit got until like... Wow, to like 2000 and... I don't really count his tag team stuff that much. So I would probably say until 2003, if not 2004. So that's a good, you know, few years. Um, then you had um, Undertaker versus Kurt Angle, uh, also on that match, on that card. Then you had Triple H and Jericho in a hellish last man standing match, which for some reason you can't find it on any DVDs. I don't know why. Um... Let's see what else we had that year. And also, and I didn't even mention this before. That year, in, in the year 2000, the Radicals debuted on Raw. They came over from WCW to WWF. The Radicals consisted of Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn. These guys were the shit, honestly. It was just so cool. Uh, the Fully Road 2000 was a great event. The Rock went over. Uh, Triple H went over. And I believe Undertaker went over. The Rock would eventually lose the belt. And I believe it was a... I think he, no, he retained in a six-pack challenge, I think it was, or a fatal four-way. I think it was a fatal, yeah, it was a fatal four-way with Benoit, Kane, Undertaker, and himself, I think. And then, so he, those guys, or no, it was Benoit, Kurt Angle, The Rock, and I think Triple H, I can't remember, I'm sorry. Um, then uh, The Rock ended up losing the belt to Kurt Angle at No Mercy. Kurt Angle just kept that. That was just another accomplishment that to add on to Kurt Angle's hellacious 2000 year. So just to recap here. We're in October and Kurt Angle has already won the Intercontinental title, the European title, the King of the Ring, and the DODF Championship. That's four major accomplishments all in the span of January, from, in the span from January to October. Huge deal. Um... Summer, I skipped SummerSlam because, uh, I mean, SummerSlam, we, we did have some, um, SummerSlam at WrestleMania did have two key things that I forgot to mention. The first ever triangle ladder match, Hardy's, uh, Dudley Boys and Edge and Christian showed us that they can steal the show at any, at any show when given the right time and uh, match type. Uh, SummerSlam 2000 consisted of the first TLC match, another first, and another great match between those three teams. Now, going back to October, um, they tried to, they turned Rikishi heel. Uh, it was revealed that Rikishi was the one who ran over Stone Cold at the previous Survivor Series of 99. Uh, Triple H was on the guy who hired him, so by association, 
Stone Cold was coming back with a vengeance to go after Triple H. Uh, Triple H and Stone Cold going to feud uh, till the match. The first match was at I believe Survivor Series. Uh, Undertaker would be feuding with Kurt Angle for the WF title, and The Rock would be feuding with Rikishi because The Rock was pissed that Rikishi tried to do this for The Rock. Like he ran over Stone Cold as a favor for The Rock. The Rock didn't like it, and The Rock would you know go on to feud with him. Um, those three matches took place uh, bet or between the you had The Rock and Rikishi. You had Rock versus Rikishi. You had Stone Cold versus uh, Triple H, and I believe a no holds or a no disqualification match. And then you had um, the, uh, Kurt Angle versus the Undertaker for the WF Championship. Those three matches took place. Those three matches took place at Survivor Series 2000. Um, after that, those three feuds carried over to Armageddon 2000, where we saw the first and only ever Armageddon Hell in the Cell. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much a six-man challenge Hell in the Cell. And I'm I would say six-pack, but it's not an elimination. It's just single fall. You had all six guys to pretty much cap off the rivalry between all six of these guys. You had Stone Cold, The Rock, Rikishi, um, Triple H, Kurt Angle, and The Undertaker. All six guys. You threw them in the Howl in the Cell. They went at it for like a good 30, 45 minutes, something like that. I can't remember. Had a howlacious match. And they pretty much ended the, good, it ended the year greatly. And to think that Starkey 2000 went, went up you know, that, that same month. Starkey 2000 took place, and they went, um, they went head to head with um, Armageddon 2000. That's sad because Armageddon 2000 was a stacked event. So yeah, that's pretty much why I think 2000 is the best year. That's just my opinion. It's my favorite year. So many memorable things. Just to recap: Undertaker's return, Stone Cold's return, Undertaker's debut as the American Badass, the year of Kurt Angle, the feud of Triple H and The Rock. Uh, you had a little little involvement from Shawn Michaels here and there. You had Chris Benoit getting of some sort of a push that year. You had the Radicals debuting. You had Rikishi actually becoming relevant and being a heel. You had, um, and then you had the three teams between the Hardys, Dudleys, and Edge and Christian putting off two amazing matches at WrestleMania 16 and at SummerSlam 2000. But yeah, leave your thoughts and let me know what you guys think is your favorite uh, year. If you guys want to make a, a video response on your favorite year and, you know, recap your favorite moments of that year feel free to go ahead and leave it as a response to this one and yeah thank you guys for watching